Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is King Ahasuerus speaking. While you are guests at my palace at Shushan, you will abide by the following laws. Turn off all cell phones and pagers. This is 480 BC, and we don't have cell phones or pagers. The same goes for flash photography and other recording devices. I warn you, there will be strobe lights and thunder during the performances. If your babies or small children begin to fuss and cry, please remove them immediately. Finally, stay out of the aisles as members of my court will be running up and down them, and you may be trampled. Remember, Persian laws cannot be changed, and most offenses are punishable by death. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the Book of Esther.
four million gold derricks in the royal treasury. General Mardonius, what about the military? Your Majesty, we can send 350,000 men from our regular army to the battle. We also have our special unit of 10,000 immortal warriors. And what else? We have more than 600 ships armed to go to war and worthy men to man the vessels. Ah, who will lead the military forces? I will, Your Majesty. Excellent. So, we outnumber the Greeks considerably. We have plenty of money, soldiers, ships, armaments, mercenaries with capable leadership. Gentlemen, the time is right. We will attack Greece and avenge my father. Those Greeks will learn not to resist the power of the Persian Empire. Yes, yes Your Majesty. Majesty. Long live the Persian Empire. Long, Long live, live the Persian Empire. Empire. Well, let us begin the banquet. Great King Ahasuerus, your father Darius would be most proud of you. Great King Ahasuerus, so noble our pride, we praise you, our sovereign, ruler of the nations far and wide. Great King Ahasuerus, our ruler, so pride, our king of all kingdoms, leading us in all its truth. King of the world, king of kings, happy are your princes, your nobles, and your servants. At this great feast for us, we wish to honor you. We drink to you, O king. O king, live forever. Long live the king! Live forever, O king! Prime Minister Mamukin, princes, honored guests, we live in the greatest empire in the world. My forefathers, King Darius and King Cyrus, conquered the Babylonians and established the Persian Empire. I have continued in that great tradition. Today, we rule the world from India to Ethiopia. But tomorrow, we will conquer Greece. With our overwhelming power, we will crush their armies. Then we will rule the whole world. King, your name is upon everyone's lips. Men of war, celebrate your exploits. Women in the field, sing your praises. Tired children speak legends of you. Great King of Hazardous, your King. Gentlemen, you've seen the vast wealth of our palaces. You've seen the glory of our kingdom. You've seen the abundance of our food, oil, and wine. But we have another treasure. Would you gentlemen care to see my beautiful wife, Ooh, Queen oh, Washti? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Arbona! Arbona, bring Queen Vashti to my banquet, wearing her crown. Yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> Oh, 
fucking Vashti you did it again. You beat us. How do you do it? You are so clever. Oh, thank you, ladies. <laughs> What in all of Persia are those men doing? Oh, you know my husband and his banquets. Sounds like they're having quite a time. Oh, it's disgusting. Grown men making fools of themselves with too much wine. Merci! 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 Excuse me, Queen Vashti. Sorry to interrupt your feast. Good evening, ladies. Queen Vashti, the king wants you to come immediately to his banquet wearing your crown. The king wants me to come to his banquet? Does he not know now? Does he not know I'm having a banquet for the ladies? That we're conducting very important matters for the kingdom? Why does he want me to come? What is the occasion? Your majesty, the king wants to show the princes and the nobles your beauty. <laughs> The king desires to show the princes and the nobles my beauty. Hmm. Does he want me to come without my veil? Yes, your majesty. What else does the king want? Does he want me dressed in royal attire? Yes, your majesty. <laughs> what else does the king desire? He wants you wearing your crown. Is this the way that the king would like me to appear at his banquet? Oh, yes, your <laughs> majesty. <laughs> well, Harbona, you can go back and tell the king, I'm not going to come. I'm not going to go to his drunken feast for his drunken guest. about his queen. <laughs> queen, where 
Where's my beautiful queen wearing her crown? Can't wait for you to meet her. She's the gem, the crowning jewel of the Persian Empire, really. Arbona! Arbona, where are you? Arbona, where's my queen? Your Majesty, the queen... The queen... The queen will not be coming to your banquet. Well, not be coming. Has she been delayed? Is she ill? No, Your Majesty. Well, did you tell her that I sent for her? That I promised my guests she would come? Yes, Your Majesty. And what did she say? Your Majesty, the queen refuses to come. She what? She will not show the princess and the noble her beauty without her veil. She refuses to come? Stand up, Harbona. Did you tell her that this was the command of the king, the king of the world? Yes, Your Majesty. You told her that I commanded her to come, yet she still does not come. Yes, Your Majesty. Mimukin, princess, did you hear this? This, this insolence, this rebellion of Queen Vashti. Well, what should we do? Your Majesty, Queen Vashti has not only offended the king, she has also offended the princes and disobeyed you in front of the royal wives. This insurrection cannot be tolerated. When the other women in the kingdom find out what the queen has done, they will also rebel against their husbands. If the queen can get away with this, how are the rest of the men empire expected to control their wives? What can we do to Queen Vashti according to the law? Under the law, rebellion against the king, even by the queen, is a grave offense, your majesty. Mm. Shethar, what would Marashi do if you sent word commanding her to come to a feast for your friends? It would give her great pleasure to come rushing to me in prompt obedience. <laughs> Tashina! What would Arsace say if you sent word commanding her to come to a banquet? She'd take instant flight to be by my side. But Queen Vashti... Refusing to appear at your feast. She floods commands of this. She's not going to come. She's not going to If it pleases the king, make a royal decree. Let it be written in the law of the Persians, which cannot be changed, that Vashti no longer be queen. And when the king's decree is known throughout the empire, all the wives will honor and respect their husbands. Very well. Vashti is no longer queen. <laughs> Cousin Mordecai, what's wrong? Adassa, you remember Reuben? Levi's son? Yes, Levi's son, exactly. Well, what about him? What about Levi's son? He likes you. Reuben likes you. Levi wants to talk to me about arranging for you to marry Reuben. M marry Reuben? Mordecai, I don't want to marry Reuben. Well, we need to think about it. Who would you like to marry? I don't know. I'm not interested in marriage right now, Mordecai. Since my parents died, you've, you've raised me. You've been just like a father to me. I'm happy just being here with you. But I'm getting older, Adassa, and I'm your only living relative. I want to know that someone will take care of you when I'm gone. I want you to marry into a good family. Marrying into a good family would be nice, but what I really want is a good man. I'm content to stay with you and until you arrange for my marriage to that special young man, Mordecai. And who might that be? I don't know, but... The man 
that I marry will be kind and true. His eyes with a patient and loving hue. His smile is as bright as the morning sun. He'll hold me tight when the day Come in, gentlemen. Greetings in the name of the King of Persia. King Osarius is seeking a new bride to replace Queen Vashti. By order of the king, all young, beautiful virgins must appear at the palace at Sushan. Do you have any daughters? No. Who is this young lady? This is my cousin, Adas uh, Esther. Esther. Very beautiful. Is she married? No. Has she ever been married? No. Is she a virgin? Yes. yes. <laughs> then she must come. She must come? When? Where? Within the next seven days, to the palace at Sushane. Within seven days? But why? Because this is the order of the king. Do not fail to bring her. Good day, sir. Mordecai, please, I don't want to go to the palace. I want to stay here with you. Hadassah, this is the king's command. We don't really have a choice. What if I don't become queen? What will happen to me? They will take care of you for the rest of your life. Where will I live? In the palace, in the king's harem. The king's harem? Mordecai, please, don't make me do this. I want to stay here, get married, have children. Please, Mordecai, don't make me do this. Dasa, I love you so. I want all those things for you, too. I want you to be happy, but we must obey the king. This isn't the way I want my life to be. How can I get out of this? There must be something we can do, a place we can hide. 
Adassa, they would find us. Is there someone I could stay with? Is, is there no other way? Adassa, you must go. The king has commanded. You must leave. Or you won't You must go. The law has demanded. You obey. Child, do not fear. You must go. Forsake all for realms unknown. You must go and be farewell. Trust in God, He will not fail. Adassa, the king says you must go. The law says you must obey the king, and God says you must obey the law. Then, I must go. Yes, you must go. One thing you must not do, do not tell them you are a Jew. Keep that a secret. We have many enemies in the kingdom. From now on, you must always be called by your Persian name, Esther. Esther. Yes, Esther. You must go, the king has commanded. This man, the man that I marry will be one. You must go. go. Perhaps. Shh! Shanaz, that is not the sort of impression you want to make on your first day. Especially to the keeper of the women. Why not? He'll bow to me soon enough. This competition is just a formality. I'm here to claim my crown, Paris Do. But there are hundreds of girls coming from all over the empire. Who knows who will win the king's favor? attitude is why I was born to be queen, and you were born to live in the harem. The king is no fool. He will choose someone from a royal line. <laughs> you know nothing of palace politics. Listen to them. I'm going to live my life in the harem, aren't I? Shh, Adassa, we can't know that. We have no choice but to go forth and trust in God. Excuse me, is this where we sign up for the king's pageant? Uh, I think so. I'm Jafana. This is Esther. My sisters are in the royal harem. They can compete against Queen Vashti, but they didn't win, obviously. But now, what good fortune? Vashti is no longer queen, and the king is seeking a new queen. 
So you want to become queen so you can free your sisters? Oh no, 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 no. I'll never be picked, not in a hundred sons. I just want to join my sisters in the royal harem. So you came here freely? That's right. My father wanted to marry me off to a goat herder, but I convinced him I could compete to be queen. Greetings, in the name of Ka uh, King Hazuerus. I'm Haggai, head eunuch and keeper of the women. I am Mordecai. This is my cousin, Esther. Esther. Esther, a lovely name. Welcome to the house of the women. Do not fear. You'll be safe and well cared for here. Everything you need will be supplied. For the next year, you'll be instructed in how to conduct yourself before nobles and royalty. You will learn the grace and manners of Persia. You'll be taught how to be a queen in preparation for marriage to the king. If you are the chosen one, you are the new queen of Persia. You must say goodbye now. Shalom, Adas. Excuse me. Come, Esther. I will show you to your quarters. <laughs> Good Sabbath, Mordecai. Good Sabbath, Ariok. Good Sabbath, gentlemen. Good Sabbath, Sabbath Melzar. Ariok, I need more oil. Rebecca must be putting too much in the bread. I keep running short. Come by tomorrow, my friend, and I will sell you some more. Very good. So, Mordecai, what's the news from the palace? It seems Esther has found favor with the head eunuch, Haggai. He has given her the best room and seven maidens to attend her. Well, that doesn't sound bad. Perhaps we can stop worrying. She's in good hands. Well, I wouldn't jump to conclusions. She's still in a Persian royal harem, and who knows what goes on in there. <laughs> yes, it's strange. It seems all her time is spent being groomed and receiving beauty treatments. Beauty treatments? Why does she need beauty treatments? She's already the most beautiful girl in Persia. I know, but for the first six months, she bathed daily in oil of myrrh. For the next six months, she is bathing in all sorts of exquisite perfumes. That much bathing can possibly be good for her health. <laughs> and myrrh, myrrh is a burial spice? Oh, Mordecai, this cannot be good. <laughs> this is all the command of the king. It's a strange land indeed, where the king prefer his women marinated like a side of lamb. <laughs> well, that's Persia. We must just trust that God has a plan and will protect Esther in all of this. Ladies, this is the royal treasury. At the king's command, you may choose anything you would like from it to wear for your introduction to his majesty. If you do not become queen, whatever you take today from the treasury is yours to keep as a member of the king's royal harem. This, this is a gift from the king to you, a very generous gift indeed. <laughs> Esther, don't you wish to choose something from the treasury? Hey guy, you've taught me everything I know about the royal court. What would please the king most? What would make me beautiful to him? Esther, you are beautiful already, but it's your inner beauty that would make you the very crown of the king himself. Hey guy, would you choose for me? Yes, right here. <gasps> treasury wasn't half as impressive as the one we have at home. What are you talking about? I would we... have thought the king of Persia possessed far more wealth than that. Look at this necklace! It must be worth a fortune! <laughs> Surrounded by peasants. Well, ladies, tomorrow is the big day. Good luck to you all. If I become queen, I will remember those of you who were nice to me. 
will make sure you are treated well in the royal harem. May the obvious choice win. <laughs> These will please the king. Hey, guy. How can I thank you? You've taught me how to be a queen. Whether or not I become queen, I will always remember you. You're a queen already. Esther, you're the most beautiful one. Esther, lovely Esther, you're like the morning star too. In the seventh year of the reign of the king Ahasuerus, the king is searching for a new queen. It is the king's pleasure this evening to meet with those here tonight. Those young ladies have been selected from the finest in the Persian Empire. The king will now receive them. Lady Paris Du! Lady Shanaz! Our 
Carbona. From the sounds of it, I would say my royal treasury is almost entirely depleted. <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. But as you know, each young lady was allowed to select her own gift from you, from the royal treasury. Well, my dear, I hope my gifts will comfort you in the royal harem. Thank you, Harbona. Lady Kush! Lady Roxana! Hey, guy. It's time. Lady Giovanna! Lady Giovanna! Lady Giovanna! Arbona, I'm growing weary. How many more girls do I have to see this evening? Only a handful more to go, sire. Very well, proceed, but make it quick. <laughs> Lady Esther! Did you say your name was Esther? Yes, Your Majesty. Hmm. What a beautiful name, Esther. Star. You mean star, doesn't it? Star. Yes, Your Majesty. Arbona, I don't wish to see any more girls this evening. Yes, Your Majesty. Esther, wait. Yes, Your Majesty. I am king. And as king, there are many, many things that require my attention. Without pretension, I will mention. All our people, far and wide, will expect me to decide every petty little grievance and then complain or cry malfeasance. But the wars, ah, the wars, when I'm gone for weeks in scores to preserve our lasting peace or to conquer mighty Greece. And my father fills my dreams. Will he smile on my regime? I am just a simple girl. I know nothing of your world. But I know goodness when I see it I know love and I believe it Can make a river run Right back where it came from Your voice is like honey Innocent eyes like a dove I've had my choice of many 
But I put you far above How sad you in the night sky So each and every eye Can see how perfect you are You'll be my guiding star Will you be my star? Yes, Miss Amy, I'm too big Arbona, bring forth the royal crown of the queen. Yes, Your Majesty. I proclaim Esther to be my royal wife. All are to honor her and to bow before her, acknowledging her place as the queen of the Persian Empire. Now, we shall have a feast to celebrate our new queen. I decree that the whole kingdom is to take a holiday. Yes, a day of rest during Esther's feast. My friends who have celebrated in this momentous occasion with me shall also receive gifts from the royal treasury. And there shall also be a release from taxes. No one in the entire kingdom shall have to pay taxes for one full year. Long live the Queen. Long live the Queen. Long live the King. And long live the Persian Empire. Long live the Persian Empire. I have a complaint against Ariok, the seller of oil. I'm a baker. I have been buying oil from Ariok for 20 years to bake my bread. For the past six months, the portion of oil he has delivered to me for a silver derrick has gotten smaller and smaller. I accuse Ariok of using false weight on his scales and cheating me. I have a complaint against Melzar the baker. I am a seller of oil. I've been buying bread from Melzar for 20 years. For the past six months, the portion of bread he has delivered to me for a silver derrick has gotten smaller and smaller. I accuse Melzar of using false weights on his scale and cheating me. You're a liar and a cheat, baker Melzar. You're a dirty, rotten thief, Ariok. You can't prove that I'm a thief. You can't prove that I'm a cheat. I'm as honest as the scales that weigh my oil. Oil! Bread! Cheat! Cheat! Gentlemen, gentlemen, calm down. Let's weigh Melsar's bread. <laughs> Look, you're a liar and a cheat baker, Melsar. Wait, wait, let's weigh the oil. You're a dirty, rotten thief, Daddy. Scales that weigh my oil. Oil! Cheat! Gentlemen, gentlemen, calm down. Shalom, peace, come sit. Now you, Melsar, see that Ariok has been cheating you with false weights for his scales and not delivering you a fair portion of That's oil. That's right! Now you, Ariok, see that Melsar has been cheating you with false weights for his skills and not delivering you a fair portion of bread. That's right. Oh, he's praying again. How is that going to help? 
When you buy oil, Melsar, and when you buy bread, Arioch, come together, lay your weights aside. Place the oil in one pan of the balancing scale, place the bread in the other. Then determine the price using the other man's goods as your weight. If either is a false weight, you will know it, and only pay for what you receive. Is not such true? Such, such is true. true. Then forgive one another, part as friends. You're a fine and noble man, Baker Melzar. You're a good and honest friend, Daddy. Thank you, Mordecai. Thank you, Mordecai. Tomorrow morning to continue our judgments. All the arrangements are made. Almost. What do you mean, almost? Are we going to do it or not? Are you afraid? Have you lost your nerve? No, but if we want to murder the king, we must meticulously take care of every detail, inside and outside the palace. What details remain? We've already arranged to drug the king's bodyguards. The king himself will be tired from his hunting trip, and after his usual bedtime wine, we'll be in a deep sleep. You said you hired mercenaries to take care of Harbona. Yes. There's only one decision that remains. Who will assassinate the king? One of us. Two nights from now, we will each enter the king's bedroom from opposite directions. You will enter from the south wing. I'll enter from the north. With our swords drawn, the first one who encounters the king will thrust him through as he sleeps. Yes. Then we'll kill his bodyguards, say we caught him in the act of murdering the king. We'll be the heroes. The king will be dead, and no one will be the wiser. Yeah. <laughs> Your enemies are dead. Big Fan and Teresh have just been hung from a tree in the center of the city. Your Majesty, a messenger has just arrived from General Andonius. Bring him in. I have just arrived from the front lines of the war, Your Majesty. I regret to inform you that the Greeks have defeated our army. What? Defeated? Our army defeated? We have the most powerful army in the world. Sire, I hesitate, but there's more to my message. We lost nearly 600 ships. 600 ships? And General Mardonius and Prime Minister Mamukin were mortally wounded in battle and are dead. Dead? Yes, Your Majesty. Dead? Get out of here before I have you put to death! Yes, Your Majesty. Ahasuerus, you can't blame the messenger. I can blame whoever I want. I'm the king of Persia, Karshina. I want the generals here tomorrow at dawn. I want a full accounting of this battle. Yes, Your Majesty. Well, go now. Do it now, all of you. I'm just so glad that you're safe that you didn't go to the battle. I'm glad of nothing right now, Esther. I should have been there. But I was here, feasting, growing lazy with pleasure. Oh, I would have taken the Greeks by the throat. I would have annihilated their armies, burned their cities to the ground. What is there to be glad of? I don't expect you to understand. I understand that being here kept you alive, and that going to war would have put you in danger. Danger? Danger in a war? 
Esther, look at what is going on here. My palace guards plot to kill me. Prime Minister Mimukin and, and General Mardonius are killed. Our army is defeated. Our navy completely destroyed. Haman says there's talk of a rebellion against me in the kingdom. What's next? Rebellion? Ahasuerus, I don't think it's as bad It as is what... bad, and I don't care what you think. Weak kings do not survive, Esther, and weak kingdoms do not prevail either. I want you to go. Leave me alone. But Ahasuerus... Go, I... Esther. Your Majesty. Ah, Haman, it's you. Come in. I heard about the defeat in General Mardonius and Prime Minister Mnuchin. My lord, I came to give my regrets. There's nothing to be done. But thank you for coming, Haman. Of course. Haman, being king is not easy. Yeah, there are few men I can talk to. Even fewer that I can trust. Fewer now that Mamukin is gone. Your Majesty, you are a great and mighty king. There have been many great kings that have ruled over Persia, but you are the greatest and the wisest of them all. Your subjects know this. We could have defeated the Greeks. Do you think so? I know so. All of your decisions have been wise and good. The military leaders just failed to follow your orders properly. If it wasn't for their incompetence on the battlefield, we would have crushed Greece already. But I am a fool, Haman. I should have been there. Perhaps. Of course, these setbacks may fuel the fire of rebellion against you. It might be wise to distance yourself from all this for a while. Ah, but that's impossible. Without Mimukin, I, I have no second in command. True. You should give someone you trust the authority to deal with your enemies while you select a new prime minister. Hmm. Who might that be? Wait. What if I appointed you as prime minister? You could crush this rebellion for me. Would you consider it, Haman? Oh, Your Majesty. <laughs> Certainly there are others more worthy. Oh, no. You're the greatest and the brightest of all the princes. Ha, this is the perfect solution. Haman, it would be a, a relief to have you as Prime Minister. Take care of my enemies. If I can serve you, my king, I will do my best for you. I will search out your enemies and destroy them. Those are comforting words. I will give you the authority you need. Thank you, Your Majesty. I will see to it that your enemies are destroyed. <laughs> Prime Minister. All in the kingdom are to bow before him. All hail Haman. Hail Haman. You may resume your business. Who is this man that refuses to bow before me? His name is Mordecai, one of the judges in the king's gate. Why does he refuse to bow before me as the king commanded? Mordecai is a Jew, my lord. A Jew? Do all the Jews refuse to bow? I understand that the God they worship commands that they bow only unto him and not to men. Take note of this insolence.
Your Majesty, King Ahasuerus, as I promised, I have discovered the troublemakers in the Empire who weaken your authority. There are certain people scattered throughout the kingdom who have laws that are different from the laws of the Persians. Different laws? Yes. And they refuse to obey your laws. Who are these troublemakers that refuse to obey my laws? These people were slaves captured during the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. They've been a despicable race of people since ancient times. Well, who are they? The Jews. The Jews? Hmm. I don't know much about these Jews. Well, they are a stiff-necked and rebellious people. Even their own prophet said so. And we can't bear the consequences of the rebellion any longer. We've already lost many battles to the Greeks. Mm. And much of the wealth of the empire is now in the hands of these greedy Jews. The wealth of the empire in their hands? I had no idea. If it pleases the king, let it be written into law that they be destroyed. I will pay the cost. I will give 10,000 talents of silver into the king's royal treasury to pay the expense for the destruction of these wicked people. Keep the money, Haman. You have my permission to destroy them. Yes, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, I will need your authority to make such a law. Thank you, Your Majesty. I will see to it that your enemies are destroyed. Second in power, a prudent man, a wealthy man, one whom there is no other to compare. By my wisdom and my cunning skill, I will. Zeresh! 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 Haven, where have you been? We are hosting a party. Herman and Druge are doing magic tricks. What are you so excited about, Haven? Magic? I'll show you magic, my dear wife, Zeresh. I hold in my hand the power of the king of the Persian Empire. Uh No. No. <laughs> this is the signet ring of the king. With this ring, I have the authority to make laws in the name of the king. Laws made in the name of the king cannot be changed. This is the signature of the king. Oh, let me try it on. <laughs> no! 
No. I actually have the authority from the king to make only one law in his name. But it's the only law I want to make. Only one law? Well, what is it, Haman? What is your law? Who is the one man in this empire who refuses to bow before me? Mordecai, the Jew! Yes, Mordecai, the Jew. We are going to make a law to kill Mordecai and all the Jews. Araman and Druge, tell me when. Tell me when is the best time for their destruction by your divinations. Cast the perm, throw the dice. Cast the perm? Haman, that's a cheap trick, just a game. You're not going to trust your future on the roll of a dice, are you? Uh, Madam Zervesh, the gods speak to us through the parade. Mm -hmm. As astrologers and as soothsayers, we can divide the future by the... And we will never fail. We can determine the day of destruction. That's right. Just a game, you say, but how expensive for those who lose. <laughs> what does it say? What does it say? It says the 12th month, the 13th day. <laughs> no, that's too long. It's 11 months, nearly a year. So long. Patience, Haven. Yeah, patience, Lord. Then we say so long. To the Jews! So long! Bye-bye! <laughs> Throw the dice again! What does it say? What does it say? It says, the 12th month, the 13th day! <laughs> no! No! I made a decree in the name of the king. All people in the empire who are loyal to the king are commanded to kill all the Jews, young and old, men, women, and children on the 13th day of the 12th month. When you destroy them, you may take their lands and their property as your just reward for your obedience to the king's decree. Is that all, my lord? That is all. It must be signed, my of lord. Of course.
days of old, I meditate on all thy works. I consider the works of thy hands. This is the night we celebrate the Lord's Passover. The night God passed over our homes because of the blood of the lamb on the lintels and the doorpost. The night our fathers were delivered out of Egypt by the hand of God. of all these laws, these statutes and ordinances which God commanded. Mordecai, Mordecai, I have terrible news. 
Prime Minister Heyman just made a royal decree to kill all the Jews. What can we do? We must humble ourselves and pray to the Lord in sackcloth and ashes. We, we will must do, do it. it. Maybe death will pass over us. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This first cup, the Kiddush cup, is the cup of sanctification and blessing. With this cup, we set this night aside as different from all other nights. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who chose us from all people, exalted us from all nations by making us holy with his commandments. Why is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights we may eat leavened or unleavened bread, but why only unleavened bread on this night? This is the matzah, bread of affliction. Our forefathers made it without leaven as they were fleeing Egypt. Here we have three matzahs. The middle matzah is taken, broken, and hidden. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are needy come and join us in this Passover celebration. Tonight, we are here. Next year, may we be in the land of Israel. Yes. On all other nights, we eat herbs of any kind. But on this night, why only bitter herbs? Remember the bitterness of our bondage in Egypt. Why do we eat lamb? God used the blood of the Passover lamb to deliver us out of Egypt. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God. Ruler of the universe. I am looking for Mordecai. I am Mordecai. I am Hatok, servant of Queen Esther. I have a gift for you from the queen. Her majesty heard you, you were dressed in sackcloth and ashes, and she sent these to you. I am sorry. I cannot accept these. I am in mourning. Her majesty will, will want to know why you refused her gift. Why are you mourning? I am mourning for my people, the Jews. Prime Minister Haman made a decree to destroy all the Jews. Please. Take this copy of Haman's law to the queen. Tell her she must go before the king and plead for our lives. Mordecai, how is it possible that Esther doesn't know what Haman has done? Sometimes those in places of highest authority are the last to learn the truth. It is the law, your majesty, and it cannot be changed. All the Jews are mourning in sackcloth and ashes. Mordecai says you must bef go before the king and plead for the lives of your people. Does he know what he is asking? Anyone who goes before the king who has not been summoned is put to death. Unless the king holds out his golden scepter. When you were born, the stars shone a little brighter when you were young you were wiser than your age and when you sing our hearts danced a little lighter embrace your destiny for this is why you
Then I will go before the king. Yes, your majesty. If I perish, I perish. Pangs of death compass me. Trouble, sorrow, and mourning make me weep. Bitterly. If I perish, I perish. Darkness, anguish, and pain. Tears of sadness and weeping. From my eyes fall as rain. And 
our God does care. He has not forsaken us. We must pray for Esther that he will give her strength. We must have faith. Who knows but that Esther has become queen for such a time as this. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Adonai What is your request, my queen? Tell me, and it shall be given to you up into the half of my kingdom. If it pleases the king, I would like to invite the king and Haman to a banquet at my house today. We'll bring Haman immediately. Yes, your majesty. Zeresh, Zeresh, Zeresh. Yes, Haman. Oh, my dear wife, the gods are smiling on me. Oh, what happened? Tell me. Something wonderful happened. Today, the queen herself invited me to a private banquet, one that was attended by the king, the queen, and me. Then she invited me to another banquet tomorrow, again with the king and just the three of us. She's not revealed her plans yet, but I'm expecting even more honor and promotion. <laughs> Who knows? One day I may rule over a vast, mighty kingdom myself. Oh, Haman! Oh, look at all the wonderful things that have happened! You have wealth, you have ten sons, the king made you prime minister, and now the favor of the queen. Oh, you should be the happiest man in the world. I should be. <laughs> but I'm not. All of these things mean nothing to me as long as that Jew Mordecai is alive and refuses to bow to me. I just saw him sitting at the king's gate. He has no regard for me or the king's law. This land is polluted by Mordecai and all the Jews. They all must die. Haven, they will. They will all be destroyed in a few months. But I don't want to wait. I want to kill them now, starting with Mordecai. Well, then why don't you tell the king that Mordecai has refused to obey your law in not bowing before you? Ask the king if you may make Mordecai an example of what happens to those who disobey royal decrees from the king. Hmm. Ask him if you could hang Mordecai on a gallows now. Splendid. <laughs> Splendid. I want a gallows built here at my own house tonight. I want it ready first thing in the morning. I'll get Araman and Drush to start building Make it 75 feet high, right over there. Then all of Shushan will see the fate of Mordecai the Jew. Everyone.
everyone will see the price of refusing to bow to you, my lord. <laughs> I will go to the king at sunrise and ask his permission to hang Mordecai the Jew. I am Haman, lord of the Persian realm. I'll kill the king and take all his power. I will be like the most high. Arbona! 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 Ah, Arbona. There you are. I can't sleep. Have the scribe bring the history books of the kingdom and read to me until I fall asleep. <sighs> yes, Your Majesty. We'll get the most boring one. <sighs> Proceed. These are some records of the kingdom. Not an exciting time. <laughs> I see here that Nippur was a very fine man. He was a merchant who made 5,000 gold derricks for the king. He was invited to the palace for a special celebration honoring him. Nippur was made ruler over the province of Margiana and was given a large estate. He had 13 children and two devoted wives. He was an excellent administrator and was justly rewarded. Artsabanus, the chief of the Parni people, was a low subject. He received a present of 100 gold derricks for his fidelity and loyalty to the king. This day, two of the king's palace guards, Big Den and Teresh, were discovered in a plot to murder Hasserus the king. This conspiracy was reported to Queen Esther by Mordecai the Jew. The matter was investigated. Big Dan and Teresh were found guilty and hanged. This information from Mordecai the Jew saved the king's life. What was that last part you just read there? Big Dan and Teresh were found guilty and hanged. No, no, that last part about Mordecai. This information from Mordecai the Jew saved the king's life. Mordecai the Jew saved my life? What reward did we give him? No reward, Your Majesty. No reward. Ah, oh, it's light out. <laughs> Who's in the outer court? It's Haman, Your Majesty. Ah, Haman. Bring him in. Mordecai the Jew. Hmm. Ah, Haman. What should we do for a man the king would like to honor? For a man the king would like to honor, what should we do? Let them put one of the king's most regal robes on him, then set him on the king's favorite horse with a royal crown on the head of the horse. Then have one of the king's most noble princes lead the man through the city streets on the horse, proclaiming that the king is honoring this man. Ah, excellent, Haman. Harbona, get one of my finest royal robes, then have my best horse saddled and dressed regally then place a crown upon the head of the horse. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Quickly, go with Harbona. Yes, sir. I want you to do everything you said. Take the horse, the crown, the robe, and then do everything you said exactly as you said for Mordecai. <laughs> for Mordecai. Mordecai the Jew. Mordecai, 
And the Jew. <laughs> of course, Your Majesty. sitting on his throne. I was humiliated. Your Master, disaster. being humiliated may need your not disaster. the least of your problems. You gave a decree for the death of all the Jews, and that includes Mordecai. But the Parines say you will not be able to defeat him. They say that you will meet with disaster. No, throw the dice again. What does it say? What does it say? Cheap trick. Just a game, you say. But how expensive for those who lose. No. No. Master, it appears that the dice are the gods. They're loaded against you. Yes. Haman, I have come to take you to the banquet with the king and queen Esther. What is your request, Esther, my queen? I ask that you save my life and the lives of my people. We have been sold to be murdered. What? Well, who is he? Where is he? Who would dare do such a thing? Who would dare? This wicked man, Haman, he gave the order to kill my people, the Jews, and me. Haman? Haman? My friend? My confidant? You lied to me. You deceived me. I didn't know. My signet no. ring! No. No. Ah. Ah. Your Majesty, Queen Esther, Please, save me. I didn't know you were a Jew. Ask the king to spare my life. I beg of you. I beg of you! Please, will he dare rape the queen right here in the palace? No. Guards! <sighs> Cover his face for death that I see him no more. Your majesty, there are gallows my 75 king. feet high at Haman's house. He made to hang Mordecai the Jew, the man who saved your life. Well, let us test his neck with it. Hang Haman on it! <laughs> Tell me what happened, Esther, my queen.
shalom, peace to all. This is a time of great rejoicing in the kingdom. Our weeping is over. The scriptures say weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. This is our morning of joy. God fought for us and delivered us. Our enemies have been defeated. Yes. Those who would have killed us have been killed. The Lord prophesied in the Holy Scriptures that he would destroy all our adversaries. We are grateful to our King, our Queen, and to our God. This is a day to remember. I proclaim this an official holiday, a feast time for the Jews. Haman tried to destroy us with the Purim by casting lots. But God destroyed Haman and his people our lot became their lot, so Purim will be the name of the feast. Esther, my queen, Prime Minister Mordecai, my countrymen, <laughs> we shall celebrate the Feast of Purim on this day every year. Now, let's begin the celebration. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand, his holy arm, has brought us victory over our enemies. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Rejoice and sing praises to him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his awesome works. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with tambourines and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It is a day of life. 